Do you often wake up wondering, what on earth did I just dream? And what does it all mean? Where did it even come from? Well, today, I'm here to tell you exactly what it all means and where it comes from. So what are symbols and what role do they play in our lives? Well, to start, they actually play a very significant role within all of our lives. And I wanted to get into the fundamentals about that today. So I'll just begin with one symbol right off the bat. When I say the word rock, what do you instantly get an image of in your head? A rock. Symbols are essentially that. Very simple, in which that is how your subconscious functions in a very simplistic manner. Now I know dream symbols can be pretty much an alien language, but I'll throw in a few just for generalized examples just so it makes a little more sense. Like for example, number one, I always get the responses from people online of teeth dreams. Generally, the teeth, they're in your mouth. And what do they do? They help you pronunciate words properly. So when you say something negative, or say something that you weren't supposed to say, and then go to bed the same night, often, a lot of the times, a teeth dream pops up, and it's very, actually, kind of dramatic. People often complain about grinding their teeth and their teeth falling out. So that's what that symbol means. Watch what you are saying. If you watch what you're saying, those dreams won't pop up anymore. Now, there is one thing that I can mention, too, as well. You can also replace that teeth dream. You can call on your divine source and request that instead of having teeth dreams to show you that you are speaking wrongly, ask for a different symbol and a more positive symbol and something else more positive will pop up instead of your teeth falling out. Symbol number two I can give, after countless, countless, countless cases of this, I've always had new beginners had the dream pop up of where they're eating lunch or food with a gathering or their family member or etc. Now what this generally means is that they need more information of how this all functions. That is about simplistic as I can get when it comes to the food dreams. Now that lesson three is out of the way, I do want to explain one thing about lesson three, an entity in your dreams always, always, always represents emotions. And if you have an entity touch you, it is a tremendous transfer of energy. So they are never supposed to touch you. So when you switch up your thoughts to be more divine and positive, you often get these entities where they just kind of linger about and help you and send messages to you rather than mess with you, in which they are perceived a positive entity or even an angel, if you will. So we see symbols constantly, all day, every day, throughout our daily lives, and we don't even pick up on them, but our subconscious does. Remember that our subconscious is the background operating system that is always watching. So you're picking and absorbing all of these symbols 24-7. And this is where we can tap in and remove these symbols or add to them, if you will. I would like to give you a quick look around where I'm at today, miles into a forest right now, just to show you a specific spot. And when I get there, I will give you the lowdown. I am next to a river. No undisclosed location. It is a gorgeous day out today. I figure I wanted to uh, go a little smoother and just more lax on this lesson. Since I kind of need it since the last one was such a fight. But this is my little area right now. This little area, obviously, since it's all painted up right now, uh, there is a path through there that is very common for people to come down. But the area I will be taking you guys to is deeper and deeper into the woods and there's no path to it and i don't even know how i found this place but before i go there i would like to explain a little more about dream symbols generally with dream symbols the language is universal so therefore we can decode it together but that not being said it is also basically an alien language that we barely understand i'm going to give you a couple more symbols that will clarify a few things 
Another dream symbol that always constantly, consistently pops up through all, all my cases is an automobile or a car, a vehicle. And what this generally represents is the emotional body. You keep your emotional body clean, you will have no problems driving your car within dreams. I've often had people complain of dreams of where they're swerving on and off the road and they eventually crash. And what does that mean? Your emotions are just going all over the place and they're about to crash. So what you could do to correct that, you go back within to that dream and then envision your car lit up by divine light. Steer it back onto the road properly into a fixed state rather than swerving all over the place. And that is how you can fix that. Ultimately, you would probably have to do that a couple times in order for it to go through for the new beginners. Water being another very, very common theme or symbol within dreams is a absolute massive one. What water means or generally represents within dreams is the flow of energy and where it's going. You can direct this flow of water within these dreams wherever you want. Now the thing is with symbols, yes, a lot of them can be very personal and unique to the own individual. So it is ultimately your choice and up to you to decode them properly. There are various resources online that which may help, but the issue is you have to know yourself to know the divine because you are ultimately the divine creator and destroyer. Okay, I finally made it. After about an hour trek through the forest. Probably a little longer than that. This place is deep in here, man. I know it's not very big, but the thing is, this place is very significant. Now, I want you to take note of all the snow on the ground, how it's laser flat. There's a very, very powerful thing about stone, especially when you go back throughout all the ages of time within the text, including the Great Pyramid. The Great Pyramid was used for initiation rituals, and there are many, many ancient buried texts about this. I will explain as I go through these lessons as well of how the ritual functions and then how ancient man used sound to manipulate his mentality and his subconscious. Stone holds a very special property or energy or whatever one way you look at it. It holds memory. You use it in microchips to run computers. It holds memory. Silicone and crystal. And there's crystal within the stone that holds memory. I came here years ago. I figured why not? It was kind of calling to me. So I figured to do a meditation session here, and what I got was astounding. I was getting all sorts of visuals, representations, and energy coming through. And what this place has shown me is that there is trauma buried here long, long ago. Because remember, stone stores information. And this is why specific lands or properties can become haunted is because the memory of trauma is stored there. But also we can correct that as well, if you know how, and which I will also show in a future lesson. So I just want to do a quick ritual to kind of give a generalized example. It's not going to be anything spectacular, but this will give you a glimpse into symbology. I already called upon my divine source, and what I want to do is simply close my eyes and get into a very relaxed meditation state. Now what I want to do next is call upon my divine source to show me the symbols that need to be worked on within myself. So I'm going to go into it, which I'll probably just skip for time's sake, and I will relay the symbol that I get. So the first symbol I got was a blue light. Now generally what this means is a blue light is healing. Blue is a very healing color. So therefore, my mind is being healed along with my body and soul. 
So I'm going to get into it again and get another symbol. When you do this, though, the symbols are going to be very faint, so make sure you pay attention very well to what comes up in your visual field. I also want to mention one more thing. These symbols come up automatically. They are not forced by my own conscious thoughts. They are coming from the subconscious, which ultimately are automatic, and they just basically pop up. Now, it may sound a bit of a coincidence since I'm surrounded by stone, but the thing is, I did get an image of stone. And what that represents is stone as being, for example, set in stone or set in my ways that I am unable to change something. I'm not too sure what yet. I'd probably have to delve into that deeper to clear this out as well. Now, when you get these symbols popping up, you can also change them to become divine. You can ask the divine to correct them however you must in order to be divine. I suppose I'll do one more symbol just for the sake. So like I said, I closed my eyes, you know, communicated and got my symbol. And the symbol was of a beautiful sunset. So in other words, I use this symbol a lot in order to keep my subconscious uplifted and divine, in which my subconscious is wired perfectly at the moment. This is how you rewire your mind to become positive. You interject these positive divine thoughts and over time, it will take note of it, and it will keep building up to a diviner and diviner sense. And you'll become more and more stable emotionally. I can explain one more symbol that I did get once long ago that I still remember that was pretty significant. I had suffered kind of a pretty good accident. I decided to perform the symbol method to see what was wrong and what I can remove and what to change and how to fix this. And the symbol I got was... A tree and this tree represented a middle-aged tree it was a middle-aged tree in its prime which was a very divine symbol to me because I felt like I was dying at the time so it was a very powerful message at the moment and I do see now why two years later that that symbol did come up at that time so maybe this will give you a glimpse into how these symbols do operate and how they kind of make sense to yourself because ultimately it does rely upon yourself in order to decode them. A symbol of a tree ultimately represents life. So that symbol is very good to see <laughs> because I'm still alive and kicking. But I think I'll move on from this location here, guys. I do have one last target that I would love to show you today, and there's a very good reason for it, and this will give you a very, very well-defined glimpse into how symbology works. All right, long haul out of the forest, long drive. And speaking of which, long drive, I was planning on filming out of state for you guys today, but forecast decided otherwise. Okay, so since my plan's been basically annihilated upon this video, since it's not here anymore, I will provide a screenshot of that at least. This is what used to be here. Now, when you see that symbol, what do you think the generalized person think? Upon first seeing that they would generally think it is evil but the thing is a symbol can be perceived as either divine or negative yet that is totally up to you and I do believe that is a very very spot-on representation of how symbolism works so a little bit of background of me I used to be an atheist before all of this which magic basically saved me and before that I was at college for studying particle physics, so I didn't believe in any of this. I was introduced to it, or thrown into it rather, whatever way you want to look at it, and I basically built myself up more and more and more to accept and dive as deep as I possibly can into this. So one thing I would like to note about this area here, since I know what was back here, I know for a fact in the very center right here, of this platform there is still an active portal of negativity portals are kind of a different story entirely you open them subconsciously and then they stay there and they are particularly difficult to get rid of it wasn't until which i was working with a team a couple years ago that really showed me that this was all too real this individual person was telling me details that only i knew I have not told a single person about any of this information and somehow through dream from them 
they got the information and they were relaying that back to me. So it just goes to show you how real this truly is. And to kind of wrap it up here, I would like to give one last dream symbol that is going to be a lot more grotesque, but it does kind of need to be said in order to kind of understand this a little more, how bizarre this can become. I've dealt with a case where an individual kept having a reoccurring dream. They were getting intimate with a polar bear. What getting intimate with someone or something generally represents is a connection to something or someone, or it could be even an object. For lack of a better term, it means that you are in love and care about that person or object or animal or what have you. It is a very bizarre symbol, but it must be said because it is a language that we still do not understand, and I'm trying to put this out there so you guys can understand this a lot more clearer and base your own decisions upon your own dreams that you have. But like I said before, it is ultimately universal to a sense, so they can be very easily deciphered. It's like, for example, the pentagram with the circle around it. I've used this so much beyond belief, it's not even funny. And to a divine sense, people spray paint these things on walls, abandoned buildings, summoning up junk. And that's where your ultimate perspective of how the symbol is to you. Is it divine or is it positive? Are you conjuring up positive or are you conjuring negative? So when you use a symbol to conjure up something, this is where it always goes haywire because they don't know what they're doing. And it's so basic. When you draw a symbol that you want to use on the ground or a paper or what have you, simply call upon what you are aiming at. Don't just go out there and ask something to come through because more than 99% likely of the time, something negative is going to come through. So when we see these symbols on the ground, just like over there, they are not particularly negative. They can be perceived as positive or negative. It's just in the context of what you use them as. It's like an Ouija board. When you use an Ouija board, 99% of the people out there just call out to whatever and ask something to come in, and then they get an attachment. So if I were to use an Ouija board, I would call upon a divine source or a divine angel, a divine ancestor, in order to come through and communicate with me, rather than just calling out to whatever. That's how these symbols work, basically. So since this land here has trauma now, since that ritual was done there, whatever was done, it can be corrected, and I would like to do a land healing at some point, not here, somewhere else, because I already have a target in mind, and that will be most likely the guide into the next lesson. I try to get out as much information as I possibly can here. It's so difficult cramming all of this information into 10, 12 minutes. I hope you guys enjoy any support at all. Please subscribe, like, and share the video as much as you possibly can. I could use all the help I could possibly get, even with suggestions on what to do. And I truly thank you guys for all your help and everything that you have done and communicated with me online and through email and all the apps that I've been working through all these years. I am so blessed for it. I cannot thank you and I cannot stress it enough. Thank you guys for everything. And as always, if there's anything else that I can help with, please comment and get through to me and I can help you as best as I possibly can. So until next time, guys.